So here we are again with the 1986 350D. I'm going to be doing a front wheel bearing. I already did that side, and it looks like this side's going to be just as bad. Actually, a little less worse. You've got a, I believe, 32 millimeter nut on the end. Obviously, take off your tire. If you can't do that, and you probably aren't in the right place. Crowd a pin out, then take your nut off. You have a 17 mil up here. And, uh, well, there may be brake pads. And yeah, there's a couple ball bearings down there. And I am not going to be saving those because, well, they're junk. And the other side, well, it pretty much grenaded the inside here because the wheel bearing was so terrible. So I'm just going to pry them off, which is kind of hard to do with one hand. Don't recommend this. But this is how I'm doing it. I was going to do all this stuff with my GoPro. But ends up it doesn't like the SD card that it has, so it has to like reformat itself and do a bunch of other stuff. Which I know you should actually take off that piece right there. There's a clip there. You should take that off or else you'll break this piece, which like I said, I'm not using my brakes. So I'm really not too worried about it. I mean you could probably get in there with your impact, buzz that out, all four of them. Leave it on, be okay. <laughs> But I'm doing it this way. Um, I might as well break the other one because I'm already this far. And I'm not worried about it. If you are worried about it, don't do that. Unclip it here, unclip it here, take it off. Like I said, my brakes are shot. Um, the other side, like I said, far worse. Those uh, pads, the bearings were so bad that the pads got wrapped up and they destroyed both these. <laughs> And those books both look like they're junk anyways. So I don't need to rebuild all that stuff. So I'm, personally, I don't, I'm not worried about it. So hoping else with my GoPro, but instead, we're all gonna, we're gonna try to do it all while we're going. And that's probably a 13. And I grabbed a 14. It's a 12. Really hope not to do this stuff this way. But that's how we're doing it. Doing this all one-handed, it's terrible so far. So, buzz out all four of them. And you're gonna need your uh, hammer after this. To get this off, which, oh, mine actually popped off. And I'm going to set this just somewhere up out of the way. I just put it up there. If I remember right, these are also 12s. It's pretty hard to mess up how those go on. So clearly the hook's going to go on top. They only go on one way. I can't remember what size these are. There's one on top, one on bottom. These aren't like some of the newer ones where those are like ball joints. I think in 33. Well, there's a 27. It's 27. And you will close this. Out. See there goes a the chunk of bearing. That one's a nut. There's a bearing underneath underneath this as well. This thing's not focusing worth a darn. Yeah, there's a bearing under here, and it looks like it's adjustable up here. I left stuff where it was. On this side, last side, the last time at least this whole thing came out. And it did again. And then I did it. Just pull it up a little bit and bring it out. There's your bearing and a seal. And I actually got lucky this time. As you can see in there, a bearing, uh, inside bearing piece is actually folded over. Last time it wasn't and I had to torch everything out. There's a seal on top there. There's where the seal is at. And there's actually double roller ball bearings in there. And this one actually has a snap ring. The other side did not. 
So that's a plus. Um, if yours is this bad, though, you want to inspect everything in here. This is the actual real important parts in my own eyes. Make sure all your splines are good. Everything's in here is good. That's got a little bit of wear on it, but I think it'll be okay for me at least. I'm going to come back in here later and replace the boot anyways, so... I'm going to do a little bit more work in here, but if you're ever going to replace the boot, this is the time to do it. My parts aren't here yet. I need to get this thing moving. And these wheel bearings were clearly gone. Uh, if you want to your boot, just grab this. It'll pull right out. And then you slide your new boot on the back side. And there should be two straps on there. I have no strap here. I don't know if there's one on the back or not. Either way, I'm not overly concerned about that right now. So... Let's get to this. I'm actually going to see if I can pause this video and pick it back up after I knock everything out. I don't know if that'll work or not, but I'm going to try. Alright, and also once you get everything now cleaned up and apart, so I ran a die grinder with a flap wheel in there, cleaned all that up inside there. I cleaned up the outside edge of here, not so much the bottom piece, but that seal goes in. You're going to have your seal go in here, which I'm going to need to drive that in. I don't want to just hit it with a hammer right now. Good for two bearings, which should have a little bit of resistance getting them in there. So that's a little bit bad. And I'm kind of worried the bearing's going to spin in there and just destroy that. So that's not how they should go in. It should have a little bit more resistance than that. Um, I guess what I'll do is I'll pull those back out. And I'll put a little bit of... Uh, just mainly because I'm not going to buy a new one of these... I already know that. Um, what's it called? Loctite makes a bearing race thing that locks. It's, what, it's made to lock in bearing races. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some of that on the outside edge of these. So that way it'll lock the outside of the bearing into place. And the outside won't spin and cut an even bigger groove in here. I mean, honestly, right now. The thing is kind of screwed. Uh, the tolerance, it's way out of tolerance basically. So by doing that at least I'm getting a little bit more longevity out of this. Uh, in the future maybe I'll replace it once these bearing goes out, bearings go out. But for right now I'm not going to just because I'm poor. And this wheeler currently has a timing issue. Timing chain jumped a few teeth. And I've not jumped into that yet. So I mean it's got bigger issues than this just right now. So that's why I'm not super worried about this right now at the moment. I mean, once I get this done, then I might start tackling the timing issue. I believe it's jumped a few teeth. I'm not 100% sure because I haven't checked into that yet. But from all the symptoms it's showing, that's what I believe because it ran good one day, the next day it didn't. Um, but if that's the case, I'll have to replace the timing chain. But then if I do that, I'm already opening the head which I'm kind of worried what I'm going to find in there cam-wise, because I think the cam's kind of hurting from when I've looked in there and had the, when I set the valves the first time. Uh, it, it's been very hot. So, I mean, this thing has much bigger things for me to worry about currently than these tolerances being out of whack. So, for now I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to see if I can pause this thing again, and hopefully I don't get a phone call, because if I do, that'll mess everything up. And I'm not redoing this, so if there's a part two, that's why. But I mean, basically from here, it's put your bearings in, put your seal in, put your snap ring back in, and then uh, put it back together in reverse order of what I did. Uh, like I said, the things I'd recommend doing is don't just destroy your brake pads like I did. That's a terrible idea. Don't do that. Um, that's basically what I'd not recommend doing. Uh, everything else would be fine just make sure you don't when you put like these bolts back in make sure you don't over tighten them and break them because then you're in a different world of hurt I guess while you're in here too you can check your drum which mine is awful I never actually checked it till now but like mine is horrible all kinds of grooves and stuff in there but that's because of uh, old bearing material it almost looks more like a seal and stuff all being in there and just destroying things. And I just finished it off by destroying the brakes, but like I said, those two pieces, they don't look too hot, so they need replaced anyways. 
and it's not hard for me to get in here and replace all this. It's just I don't have the money to do it right now, or more of I don't want to put the money into it right now, I should say. Because uh, if that's not going, I don't got to worry about stopping. I don't have rear brakes. This thing has no brakes currently, but first gear's low enough. I'm also not too concerned about that. So we'll kind of... I'll probably just cut it off there, just because you guys kind of see the gist how to do it. Then just put everything back together in reverse order. And no reason for me to show you how to do this stuff for 20 minutes when you've seen basically everything you need to know in, well, 10. So that's going to be it. I know I've seen some videos of some guys uh, saying, oh, this is basically how all Hondas are. And I went and did mine. I'm like, no, that mine's different. One thing I do on the other one that I also don't really recommend, but it needed to be done, is my races were stuck in here. Not the races. The outside of the bearing was stuck in there so bad. I had to torch it out, but I couldn't get this very bottom piece. So I had to slightly notch that just to get a chisel in there, just to knock that other one out. Because I don't recommend it, but I saw it as I have a seal back there, which should keep most debris or anything out of there. Plus, I don't plan on going through a ton of water like the last guy did, hence the snorkels. So, I mean, we'll kind of see from there. Uh, I guess I'd also recommend, like, repacking this bearing. Mine looks kind of awful. It's been in water, as you can tell. So I'm probably going to repack that. And I'd imagine there's a bearing on the, on the bottom side as well. I don't know though. I actually never looked on the last side because I'm not. I said I'm taking this thing apart again in a few days, so I'm not super concerned about it at this exact moment. But that's pretty much it. They're fairly simple if you know what you're doing. Uh, that's why it took me forever to do that side because I had no idea what I was doing even after watching videos. I'd never seen a 350D front uh, wheel bearing replacement. That's how I take them apart and everything, and it's pretty simple. Doesn't take too long. Assuming that the bearing pieces in here don't fight you, which if yours didn't get as bad as mine did, which I have another video up showing how terrible these were, that it'll be uh, a lot more easy. I'd suggest he's using a slide hammer or something, or if the inside of the bearing's still there, hammer it out and it'll be fine. But that's going to be it for this one.